For nearly 7 billion people and countless living things, this is home. For over 40 years, only one organization has been the global watchdog protecting our planet. Founded in 1969 by the legendary David Brower, Friends of the Earth set the standard for all environmental activism. He wanted it all. He wanted, you know, some protection for the natural world, not just part way. He really recognized what kind of trouble we'd be in if we didn't take action. If you're courageous, you're not going to compromise. You're going to set the bar out where it should be and try to push everybody to get there. And if you're creative, you use all the tactics that might be needed. For decades, Friends of the Earth has targeted the, some of the key drivers of environmental destruction, and that means following the money. It's putting a green lens on key financial decisions. With our Green Scissors campaign, we've saved over $50 billion that would have otherwise been wasted on projects that would have polluted the environment. Protecting our planet is no small task, but Friends of the Earth's tenacious efforts around the globe have resulted in tangible and dramatic victories for Mother Earth. Forty years ago, Friends of the Earth took on the problem with the ozone layer. We were destroying a very important layer that surrounds and protects our planet. That hole in the ozone layer is not the same size as 1987 when Friends of the Earth and everybody urged us to get tougher about it. It is not bigger, it's smaller. One of the uh, most significant achievements we had in this arena was the Pavley Law. And this law requires a 30% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 2016, which is pretty significant. There's this unfortunate practice that's now kind of being used right now by coal mining companies, and it's called mountaintop removal. They essentially blow off the top of a mountain. They push all that debris into a stream. They kill that stream, essentially. And then they scoop out the coal, just like a pumpkin. Friends of the Earth has been working on coal mining, um, you know, for the last 30 years. And the funny thing is, is that despite all this coal mining and all these problems we have with coal, we have the industry saying, clean coal. We like clean coal. Clean coal is oxymoronic. Clean coal doesn't exist. We were able to save over 200 river valleys from boondoggling public works construction that would have wasted water, destroyed the river valleys, the farming areas, the forest, the wildlife habitat. Vessels are one of the transportation modes that are the least regulated. As a result, they kind of have been doing whatever they want. And of course, one of those things is dumping waste into the ocean. The average cruise ship on a one-week voyage can generate 200,000 gallons of sewage, which is the equivalent of six swimming pools, six large swimming pools full of sewage. You not only think about playing in water or swimming in water that's, that has these things, but you're also eating the fish and shellfish that have been impacted by the, that pollution. And decade after decade, we have followed up with victories in Clean Water Act, winning cases to force polluters to pay penalties for violating the law, and that climaxed into the year 2000 when the Supreme Court upheld Friends of the Earth in a case against Laidlaw, a toxic polluter in, in South Carolina that was dumping mercury into waters that people were fishing. And so the Supreme Court said, citizens do indeed have a right to go to court to stop illegal water pollution. Friends of the Earth has also led the way when it comes to ridding the planet of dangerous toxins, harmful chemicals, and confronting the dangers of unbridled technology. And one of the more successful campaigns was to go after cancer-causing ingredients that are in the personal health care products, the cosmetics. And then we find out that nanoparticles, which can penetrate through the blood-brain barrier, are being put in things without any independent safety testing and no federal regulation whatsoever. There are nanoparticles in our food, there are nanoparticles in our cosmetics, nanoparticles in our sunscreens, nanoparticles in washing machines, clothing, all kinds of things that we are only learning about now after they're already on the market. We've become the natural guinea pig for corporations that are pursuing profits. Let's take stock about what's going on and give the companies give our economic system a redirection. That means we don't have to worry about chemicals being entered into our body, unwittingly, unknowingly, untested. Friends of the Earth was also one of the first organizations to sound the alarm and confront the bigger picture, 
the perfect storm of human impact on the planet. I think one of the biggest threats that we face with climate change is sea level rise. And as we observe some of the ice sheets breaking up now, uh, scientists are telling us that we're going to see two to three meters of sea level rise by the end of the century. Uh, New Orleans is really just the proverbial tip of the iceberg on this thing because the problem is going to be extensive worldwide. It's like your house burning down. You don't wait to see how long it's going to take to burn down or you don't ask why it's burning down. You call the fire department. Well, with global warming, our house is burning down and we need to take immediate action. Friends of the Earth's international network has expanded to over 77 countries where dedicated activists pursue effective solutions that respect sovereign nations and are just and fair to local communities around the globe. The mission has always been more international in thinking because pollution problems don't stop at the border. Friends of the Earth's coalition, which is now over 70 groups, uh, respects the diversity of the planet, the diversity of life, and the diversity of human cultures. Forty years of hard-fought accomplishments, yet so much more to do, and the stakes couldn't be higher. I think the challenge now is to save civilization itself, because if we cannot stabilize climate, if we cannot stabilize population, if we cannot restore the economy's natural support systems, then we're, we're in serious trouble. Uh, we're toast. Dire circumstances call for decisive action. By being the one who's refusing to compromise, refusing to take any prisoners, we really push everyone to take a bigger change than they otherwise would take. You can be a part of the solution. We need Friends of the Earth and they need your help. For more information, get involved or donate everything you have to www.foe.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter, which I still don't know what that means, but <laughs> as far as I can feel, I'm Twittering as we speak. Or call us at 866-217-8499. Take action and help Friends of the Earth take back our planet.